So I want to open today by asking all of you a question. How many of you are currently the CEO of a company? Raise your hand. We have one. How many are the chief marketing officer of a company? We have one. How many are the chief operating officer of a company? Okay, so the answer is you are all of those things. So everybody's hand should have been up. So let's talk about that a little bit. You are actually a CEO. You are the CEO of your life. If your name is John Smith, then you are the CEO of the John Smith Company. So what does a CEO do? What does a CEO do? Anybody? A CEO sets the strategy and the vision for an organization. That's really what a CEO does. They're high level. They're strategic. And each and every one of you needs to be strategic and have a vision for where you want your life to go. Too many people live their lives day to day without thinking about where they're going, without thinking about a destination. Well, no company can achieve great things without a vision and a strategy and an action plan for reaching that destination. So, what does that mean? That means that you need to think about what your vision is. And think long term. Now, I want you to remember that that vision can change. With time, things do change. And you can always make adjustments to your plan. But you have to have a plan. You have to have a plan. And it's interesting, I was talking with my wife as we were driving down here this morning, and I said, isn't it funny how people spend more time thinking about and strategizing about planning a vacation or a wedding than they do thinking about planning their life? How crazy does that sound, right? But it's true. How many of you really take the time to think about your life and plan it out? Probably fewer than there should be in the room. Because everybody should be doing that. Everybody should be thinking about where you want to go. So the only limitations that are placed upon you in your journey are placed upon you by you by you. You're the only one who holds yourself back. So let me just shift gears for a second and talk about the chief marketing officer of your life. That's you, again. Well, does anybody know what a chief marketing officer does? So a chief marketing officer is an individual in a company who sets the tone for the brand of the company and how you're going to position your company in the marketplace and how you can build the value of that brand. So you are the chief marketing officer of your lives. How many of you have really thought about your own personal brand? How many of you have really thought about how you're going to create your own personal brand? Everything we do every day impacts your personal brand. So isn't it interesting that not, not many of us think about an action we're about to take and how that will impact our brand? It's critical that you build a strong personal brand. And as the chief marketing officer of your life, it's your responsibility to do that. Our parents' jobs were done once they raised us and sent us off to school. Once you go off to school, you're the CEO. You're the CMO. 
It's up to you to define who you are going to be. I can't tell you how many students come and talk to me and say, I really want to get this particular job when I graduate. So I'm in the business school. I really want to do this. I really want to do that. And I said, OK, how have you prepared for that? How have you prepared? How are you positioning your brand? What steps have you taken to enhance your brand, to make you desirable in the marketplace? What have you done? It's amazing how many people don't think about that. We just get caught up in living our daily lives without thinking about where we're going, where we want to be, how we want to be perceived, what we want to accomplish, and really important, how are we going to get there? You're also the chief operating officer of your life. So the chief operating officer of a company is an individual who oversees the daily operations of a corporation. So it comes as no surprise to you that you are the chief operating officer of your lives. What's your plan this week? Is it well thought out? Is it efficient? Are you maximizing the time that you have, or are you wasting it? We can't get it back. What are you doing to plan out the operations of your personal business? Really critical. Because if you could just get 15 or 20% of your time back and use it wisely, just think about what you could do with it. But we don't, you know, most of us don't think about that. We need to. We really need to think about that. If we wear our CEO hat, our CMO hat, our chief operating officer hat, and we do the right things and we make the right decisions, we're going to go further. So decisions that you're going to make in your lives should be in three categories. One are strategic. Everybody has to have a strategy. What is your personal strategy? Strategy is big picture. Strategy is long term. And that's what a CEO provides over, the vision of a company for the long term. Well, you're that CEO, so you need to be planning your strategy. The chief operating officer and his or her team under them plays a very tactical role, a tactical role. A tactical role is more short term, maybe within a year. What's my plan for the year? That's tactical. It's not strategic. Are you thinking about that? And lastly, the third is the operational role. That's the day to day. What am I doing today to elevate my personal brand? What am I doing today to get closer to my goal? What am I doing today to get closer to achieving the vision I have for me? So now you may be thinking, well, how do I really do this? All right, so let me talk to you a little bit about that. You got to get into your head a little bit, so let me explain. So as people, naturally humans, what we tend to do is engage in something we call negative self-talk in the coaching field. So each and every one of us in this room, including me, we talk to ourselves all day long. We do. All day long, we're talking to ourselves in our heads. Maybe not out loud. Maybe some of you do out loud. But we're all doing it silently. We're thinking, and we're chattering, and we're talking. And you know what's really unfortunate? That the majority of time, the talk is negative. I could have done this better. I should have done this better. I should have done this instead of that. I'm not good enough for this. I'm too thin. I'm too fat. I'm not smart. I'm it. It's all negative. 
Where does that get you? You're a CEO. Where is that going to get you? What if the CEO of a company, what if, the, what, if, what if the CEO of Apple, Mr. Cook, Tim Cook, was negative about Apple? What if he was thinking, Apple's a terrible company? We're going to go nowhere. We're not good enough. We're not smart enough. Where would Apple go with a CEO like that? So where do you expect to go with a CEO like you? That's the question. So we need to take the negative self-talk and we need to replace it with positive self-talk. As soon as you start to think something negative in your head about you, immediately that should be a trigger to replace that thought with something positive about you. Every, I don't know all of you in this room, but I know something. I know that every one of you have positive attributes. I know that every one of you have skills that I don't have. I know that every one of you have qualities that I don't have. Take the time to acknowledge what you're good at. Take the time to acknowledge an accomplishment because we don't tend to do that. We tend to dwell on the negative. You can't be in the C-suite, a chief officer of a corporation, with negativity like that. You know what? Even some corporate chief executives are not good CEOs of their lives. They get involved in a personal scandal, whatever. They're certainly not managing their lives the way they manage their company. Well, you do have a company. It's your company. You own it. You determine its success. You determine its future. You need to embrace the fact that you have that power within you to rise and to take your company to new heights, to greater value. If your company had shareholders, you'd want to grow that value of that company. Well, you have the power to do that, every one of you in this room. And it doesn't matter how old you are. You could be 18 or 80, and it's not too late to become a great CEO. So, let's talk a little bit about a CFO. Anybody know what that is? A chief financial officer. You are also the chief financial officer of your life. This is a very important role. You, you can just look at the news and read about people who have come into enormous amounts of money Maybe they were entertainers, maybe they were athletes. And then you hear about them filing for bankruptcy after they've made millions of dollars. There's no reason for that. You're the chief financial officer of your life. You have to be responsible. Every company has limited financial resources. Financial resources are not limited or not unlimited in any organization. They're limited. Well, so are yours. And each of your limits may be at a different place, but you need to work with what you've got. You need to work with what you've got. It's not good to drive high levels of debt in a corporation. Debt's okay. It's okay to have debt. A mortgage is good debt. A car payment is good debt. You need to have a car. Credit card debt is not good debt. Credit card debt means you're buying things you can't afford. So as a company, you can't spend money you don't have. This is your company. So I hope you're getting the drift of what I'm trying to say here. You need to take control of your life now. So my hope is that with this short talk, you'll be able to draw a little line in the sand today and say, I want to look at things a little differently when I look at myself. I want to think of myself 
as the CEO of the Gary Cohen Company, and the COO of the Gary Cohen Company, and the CMO of the Gary Cohen Company, and the COO of the, and you need to be doing the same thing. Because if you do that, and you behave in that role the way you should, watch what happens to you. Watch what happens when you're strategic. Watch what happens when you take measured risk, because that's a good thing, by the way. Risk is okay, but measured risk versus crazy risk. And I'll let you use your own imaginations as to what's crazy risk and what's measured risk, okay? But that's what you have to do. That's what you have to do to take your life to the next place. So, it's all about shifting your perspective. You know, I was, I was told this a long time ago, and I love this line. So listen to this line very carefully. When you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. When you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. When you change the way you look at yourself, you will change. You will change. Because you will then be taking control of your life. Now let me just talk about one last thing before we close. And that is power. Don't ever give anybody else more power over you than you have over yourself. Only you can relinquish power to someone. Only you. You have the power to make decisions. You have the power to use your own head. And if somebody comes to you with, with nasty criticism or verbal attacks, if you allow that to get to you, then you've given that person so much power. Why? Why would you do that? You've got the power. You're the CEO. Not them. They're the CEO of their lives, but they're not the CEO of your life. So they shouldn't have the power to change your course, to change your direction. And by the way, as a parent, we as parents are the most guilty of that, right? We try to steer our children in a direction sometimes. And you know what? That's not fair. Because what I might want for my daughter may not be what she wants. And it's her life. She's the CEO. So let me give you a great example of that. My daughter went to, she was a Terp too. She came to Maryland. She was in the journalism school. In her senior year, it's not easy to get into the Merrill School. That's a really great journalism school. And in her senior year, getting ready to graduate, she says, Mom, Dad, I don't want to do this. Okay, we just spent money for four years of college for a journalism degree. She doesn't want to do it. But you know what my wife and I said? Okay. I mean, if you don't want to do it, you don't want to do it. She went through, she went through journalism. She got a lot out of it, but she decided that's not the career track. Okay, take a step back. What do you want to do? She says, I want to be a speech language pathologist. Okay, so what's your plan? What's your strategy? What are you going to do? Lay it all out. She did. And now she's a successful speech language pathologist. So, in closing today, I just want to summarize. Please be sure that you are the CEO of your life and nobody else. Be strategic, be smart about it, create that vision for yourself. Please be the chief marketing officer of your life. Build your personal brand. Do what you can to build your brand. When you build your brand, you will be in demand. So build it. Do what you have to do to build it. Chief operating officer, manage your days efficiently and effectively always working towards the bigger plan. And finally, Chief Financial Officer, 
you got to stay on top of that because when finances go down the tube, so does the whole business, which is your company. I thank you for listening to me today, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you.